I'm restoring these old Macintosh plush computers and two of the keys on this keyboard were broken. So instead of buying a new one, I figured I'd just repair it since it was only two keys and I couldn't find much information online. So I decided to record this. So if someone else is having difficulties or needs to repair these keyboards, then they'll have some resources. This is a M0110A. I think the A stands for having the numpad over here. Um, other than that, I don't know. I think they're pretty similar. They do have different switches, which I'll show in a minute. So you need to kind of know which model you have before you kind of open, order parts. Um, but usually you can tell by the looks of them. So when you look at the switches themselves, you can tell by the look. There's only two different types. Just make sure you get the right ones. To open it up, there are six screws on the back. They're just basic Phillips screws on the corners. I've already taken off most of them. Um, there's just one left over here. Besides that, it should just pop right off. It's just a shell around, so come off pretty easily. Um, and then same with the actual motherboard. I'll actually unplug it here from the computer. So I can work with it. And oh, it would have been easier just to do that. Put the shell to the side. And you don't need to take the board off of the keys to actually do the repair work on it. This one I've actually already taken off the broken switches. So when I got this keyboard, it was missing the keycaps and it had these two switches in there in the place, but you can see how they're broken. So this is a, a new one and you can see the old one, how it's broken off. So what I did is I took this off, I opened it up to see what kind of switches it are is once you open it too, you can see the brand and that will tell you what kind of switches you actually need to fix the keyboard. So that's one way to be 100% sure. Um, all of these keycaps are basically soldered in with two points on the back. So when you look at the switch, there's these two little metal pins there and those actually stick through the PCB like so and they poke up through these holes and those need to be soldered. So to remove the switches, all you have to do is desolder the two that line up with the switches you want to uh, remove and they just pull right out. So I already did both of that. I did that to two of these um, to guarantee I got the same switches and to remove them from the broken board. So before I put the keycaps on, I need to replace these two switches or switches on the board, I have to solder them back on. Um, they're only gonna fit one way, so you don't really have to worry about direction because they fit on basically like this with the two pins at the top. Um, they fit down inside. And I don't know if you can see that, but you can see them poking out there. And that's what we actually have to solder. They actually fit in and snap in nicely, which uh, is great. So you don't have to worry about holding them down with anything. Um, push it down it's got both of those in there and if we flip the board over we'll be able to see that they're poking up right there and right there Get the soldering iron warm up Could probably use a little flux if we wanted to um, but I don't know if that's gonna be necessary Putting a decent amount on, make sure we don't get any of the other traces lobbed in. Four pins soldered, um, all done. That literally that easy. Um, and what we can do before we button it all back up, can plug this in here. Plug this in here, and I only booted off a floppy, so I don't have any software actually, but I can come in here and uh, just create a new folder to test with. So backspace, and the two ones that was working is nine, which is that, and the shift 
which is that, which works. Oh, can't see that idiot. And there's a nine, and there's a shift. So that was the one on the left that I fixed. And the other one is this equal sign plus sign. So you can see they're working just a simple four basic solder points. Um, and then it's just a matter of putting it back together, which again, is just as easy as you take it apart. It's those four screws on the back. You can put these keycaps on now. Make sure you put them in the right spots. They just kind of push on. Very good. You can see, um, they obviously the color match isn't perfect, but it's close enough and it's functional, which is more important than the actual color. Some purists might care about that. I don't. Um, and to put this back in, you just kind of set it in the bottom case, line up the holes. It kind of it has these little pins sticking in. You can't screw it up. It's very, very basic. Slide this part on, and then we just basically add, put all those six screws back into the bottom. Um, I won't bore you with all the details, but... It's easier just to put in one in each corner. Make sure you get it all nice and closed up tight and everything's lined up and then just go through and put the rest in. And that's how you fix these old Macintosh M0110A or non-A keyboards. Very, very basic.